the dream shop build is really starting to take shape. With the foundation done and what I can only describe as a world record attempt for the fastest wall framing job, no, I'm serious, it's crazy. I can finally start to see the vision I've had in my head for four years come to life, including being as meticulously intentional as possible and including some truly unique design choices. Plus, an all-out race against Mother Nature. Can we get this thing dried in in time? This video is sponsored by ShipStation. Welcome back to my dream shop build. In this video, we're gonna go from bare slab to fully framed out shop. But in the last video, the slab wasn't actually there. So let's quickly recap, go back and see how we did that, and then we'll get to framing. If you wanna get in the concrete business, you better be a boring person. That's all I'm saying. To get ready for this, they got the whole slab filled with gravel to the correct grade, which was then topped with a moisture barrier and then steel mesh. The guys got to work first pouring the back half of the slab, which if you remember is dead flat. The other half has the slight fall towards the front of the shop, so it was kind of cool watching them screed, measure, adjust, screed some more, and then work their way out of the front garage door opening. In no time, it felt like they got this entire four inch slab poured and ready for finishing. They did tell me that this mix was extremely wet. You can see in all this top water. So they had to wait a little bit longer than normal to finish it. And after some quick thinking to remove that surface water, they had this thing buttery smooth. Next morning, they showed up to do the saw cuts, which helps prevent cracking. And I actually went ahead and told them to not apply any sealer because I'm going to eventually be coating this floor in epoxy but dang, it turned out good. I always find that when you're at this stage where the slab is just poured and you don't have any walls up yet, that it feels smaller. It was like this when I built the shed after I poured the slab, I'm looking around going, this is it? But as soon as those walls go up, it starts feeling way bigger. Don't know why that is, not sure what psychological things that work there, but slab's in good shape. It's really smooth. They did a great job finishing. They got all the saw cuts in, which are nice and tight. And I don't see any cracking, which is really good. Another thing they managed to do was actually backfill behind the retained wall uh, around the corner. They left it kind of open here because we've got a retaining wall that's gonna sort of go that way, but that's tomorrow's problem. Now this slab has been curing for about five days, so it's in a good spot where we can actually start framing, which should start tomorrow morning. Once our truss package was delivered, along with the rest of our lumber package, our contractor reached out and said, hey, we're gonna have a meeting with the framing crew to go over the plans. The guys jumped right into pulling measurements, checking square, and snapping chalk lines on the ground. We talked about some changes we made and agreed on a path forward. And as I started getting ready to leave, I hear some circular saws start firing up. And I thought, hmm, maybe they're making a temporary miter station or something. And then before I could even turn on my camera, a wall magically appeared. And then more after that. It turns out that we have very different definitions of things like plan review meeting, and we're starting tomorrow. Now keep in mind, we got here at 2 p.m. It's not like this is first thing in the morning and these guys have all day. I was starting to think that they just couldn't help themselves. They're looking at all that lumber over there, just sitting there, asking to be cut up. Now you've probably noticed by now that all of the wall framing is two by sixes because, well, go big or go home. We had to have walls that match the overdone foundation, right? Now, the benefit of going with two by sixes is plenty of room for insulation and utility runs in the walls. We'll get more into that once we start finishing out the inside down the road. So in the time it would have taken me to lay out the stud positions on just the first small section of wall, they had every freaking perimeter wall stood up. After slapping up the garage door header, they shifted their focus inside to frame out the small bathroom in this corner. Thanks to the plumber's extremely precise drain and water line locations, we had to make this bathroom wall out of two by eights just to fit everything. And with that done, I thought, surely, that's an excellent stopping point for the day. Hard day's work. All the walls are up, let's hit them hard tomorrow. No, it turns out these guys are just much harder workers than I am and thought, eh, we can get the sheathing up too. Which they finished by 8 p.m. Holy moly. You know, the craziest thing about this is that they not only got this thing totally framed and sheathed in six hours, that was a total of six hours from showing up on site, having never seen the plans at all. They all kind of looked around the plans for about 15 minutes, made a couple chalk lines on the concrete, and then just 
did it. And I could already hear some of you in the comments, my granddaddy used to frame houses in 37 minutes. No, he didn't. Okay, let's just objectively agree that was impressive. Now it's important to keep in mind that I designed this place to be a shop, not necessarily a garage or a pool house or anything like that. So the only windows in the entire place are actually these two along the back wall. And as we're getting things framed up, I was second guessing myself thinking that I actually probably don't want any windows because that's valuable cabinet space. But in the end, I decided to keep them because I thought it was important to get at least some natural light in here, though not perfect for filming, just makes the space feel a little bit nicer to be in. And if I'm honest, I still have plenty of available wall space to hang cabinets and storage and all that fun stuff. So with everything set, plumb and square, we're ready to start laying trusses, which is gonna start tomorrow morning, bright and early. And they tell me that they're gonna be completely done with framing and basically getting this thing dried in by tomorrow, which means they will have framed this entire thing in a day and a half. I'd probably still be staring at the first wall, making sure I got all the studs in the right places. Sheesh. Now that I know these guys are hustlers, I have big expectations for today. They wasted no time adding zip sheathing to the gable end trusses so they don't have to do it up in the air. We have a crane scheduled to come today so the added weight wasn't really a concern. In perfect unison, the other half of the crew started getting all of the walls braced, double checking for plumb, level, and straight. A very important step that novices most certainly don't take in their own projects. And with that knocked out, they started creating the girder truss. Since the shop is an L shape, this truss will carry the end loads of the main trusses. So it obviously needs to be pretty beefy. Now there's a non-symmetric nature to this particular design here, which is gonna make sense later. crane all set up, the first truss to fly in place was that girthy girder truss. Its position is pretty important since it ties into most of the others. Next up was the far side end gable truss, which is one of the ones they got sheathed ahead of time. And then it became a closely coordinated effort to put all of the corresponding trusses in the right spots. Now typically trusses are set two foot on center, but anytime there's a bigger spacing needed than that, like this one making room for the eventual stairwell, they're doubled up. And you'll notice that most of these trusses have a giant hole in the center. These are called attic trusses, which will allow me to create a sort of upstairs room, among other things, once we're done. It was so cool watching this thing come together. Even my neighbor came by to watch. All of my kids were in school, otherwise they would definitely be out there too. After adding the backside trusses, the framers had the genius idea to drop the stack of subfloor into the four foot wide opening between the trusses. This obviously saves them from having to carry all this up there later. Example number 597 that this ain't their first rodeo. After setting a few of those subfloor panels, another group got to work framing out the covered porch on the end of the shop. This is where the outdoor kitchen is eventually gonna go. And since we don't have any posts set here yet, they did all of this with just temporary bracing. Everything they're doing is leading up to getting the roof sheathed and getting all of these trusses tied together, which includes adding the subfascia. Now, I wouldn't call myself superstitious. I'm maybe just a little stitious. But as soon as you put OSB anywhere outside, it's like a rain stick. Hold on, is that what the Native Americans used to make their rain sticks? Anyway, as they started to get a bunch of the roof covered up, they started to run out of daylight. And as day two of framing draws to a close, now is a good time to talk about ShipStation. Now, if you didn't know, I run an e-commerce business and I'm always looking for solutions that make my life easier, more efficient, and of course, for things that can save me money. Using ShipStation can help you achieve exceptional shipping efficiency with a robust all-in-one order fulfillment system. And it integrates with over 180 of the most popular e-commerce platforms, marketplaces, and carriers. 
Look, I love automating tasks that I don't really enjoy doing. And shipping and fulfillment is one of those areas of opportunity in my business. ShipStation makes it super easy to quickly and easily print all of my labels and packing slips in one spot. It's also hard not to love the thousands of dollars I save on the shipping discounts. ShipStation is far and above the fastest and most affordable way to ship products to your customers, which is probably why over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce businesses with ShipStation. Because what other tool can effortlessly help you scale your business and deliver better customer experience? So whether you're looking for incredible efficiency or your business has outgrown your old shipping solutions, lead your e-commerce business into a smarter future with the shipping software that delivers. Switch to ShipStation today. Go to ShipStation.com slash ShopNation to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com slash ShopNation. All right, let's get this thing finished. I swear, it hasn't rained here in probably a month. And then as soon as you put OSB on the roof, it rains two days in a row. Uh, these guys are actually rushing to get the all the roof ready because they're set to put shingles up tomorrow because we're supposed to have four days of straight rain. So, see if they can do it. All right, so we've got a bit of a time crunch here to beat the rain. Now, before they can get the rest of the sheathing up, they had to add these partial trusses between the two roof peaks. I thought it was pretty cool. The truss company actually made these two, and wouldn't you know it, a perfect fit. As the roof sheathing continued, they also started facing the front of the gable wall with zip panels. Since this was the only one they weren't able to do ahead of time before the crane left. So these poor guys get to ride the struggle bus, manhandling full sheets up there. Now I say struggle bus, but they don't seem to be struggling nearly as much as I would trying to do this. So, mad respect. Now the race was still on to get those roof details done, including this gable rake overhang, which again, needed to be done from a ladder. I just couldn't help but appreciate watching these guys work. I also can't help but feel both annoying and utterly useless just walking around filming them all day. I'm not even sure they know I have a YouTube channel. They probably just think I'm some neurotic homeowner getting way too invested in details. Either way, I'm learning a ton watching them do their thing. I'll leave a link and some info about this company if you're interested. They work across multiple states and are some of the hardest working dudes I've ever seen. All right, back to the drama. With light fading fast, they scrambled to button up as much as they could before sunset. But there's still a gaping hole in the roof. I guess we'll just see what happens tomorrow when the roofers show up. Which of course was first thing in the morning and predictably wasted no time getting started, at least on the completed roof sections. Starting with this ice shield. Now we're in Ohio, so we get some snow and ice, and apparently this stuff helps protect your roof from damage. As they were doing their thing, the framing crew was finishing the little details to get the roof ready for shingles. Starting with these little gable returns. Is that the right word? Either way, it's to match our house, which is quite literally right next to it. Team Shingles was making some serious progress and catching up to team framing. For now, they have enough area to stay busy, but at the pace they're going, it's not gonna take very long. Finally, I started to see some OSB sheets making their way up to the last roofing section. And they had a pretty good system down of the senior guy yelling down measurements while the young guy had to cut the panels and then carry them up a ladder. Which reminds me of my experience trying to carry OSB up a ladder. Yeah, that's that struggle bus I was talking about. And just like that, the last puzzle piece was put in place, which was good timing because the roofing crew was licking their chops ready to jump on it, which of course they did. Now moving inside the shop, they can finish laying the subfloor in that attic space. Okay, so they're pretty much done with the framing and actually started on the roof, which we're gonna cover in the next episode, but I wanna show you something in the attic. Now I said framing is mostly done because there should be stairs here going up to the place where I'm gonna show you, but for the time being, I'm just gonna use my ladder. And we'll talk about this hole in a second. Now the total area of this upper attic space is about 12 feet wide by about 30 feet long with seven foot ceilings. But this isn't it, there's actually another room over here. Right across the way here, across the hole of death, is another little room that I made sure we planned for. Since we're building this with a 12-12 roof pitch, I wanted to take advantage of the height, so we made sure to put attic trusses wherever we could. So this room here that we're in is a 10 foot by 12 foot, roughly, area that I'm gonna turn into kind of a utility room. In here is where I wanna hide a giant dust collector, my air compressor, and potentially something else. But the idea would be to put it all in here, contain it with a bunch of soundproofing and insulation and a door, kind of where you're standing right now is the camera, 
and just get this thing as soundproof as possible while still offering a bunch of utility to the shop down below. Now the plan for this area is kind of twofold. On this side, I'm thinking this is gonna be kind of the clean area. Obviously everything down in the shop has the potential of getting dirty. Up here, you're kind of up and away from stuff. So this could be where things like laser cutters, 3D printers, that kind of stuff can live. And then on this side, is gonna be a great place for storage. So storing bulk things that I don't wanna keep down in the shop, up out of the way in this space. Okay, now for the hole in the middle of the floor. What that's gonna be is an access point for a hoist I'm gonna mount up in that attic section. So when I had the trusses drawn up, I had them engineered to be able to hold a thousand pounds from that top stringer. Is that what it's called? So I'm actually gonna mount a track and a hoist that can move back and forth so that I can do two things. Number one is be able to back my truck into the garage, use the hoist to pick up heavy things out of my truck bed. This has caught me so many times off guard and I'm really excited to have that as an option. The second thing is if I wanna bring things up into the attic to store, I don't have to carry them up the stairs. I can just make a basket or something and we'll pick it up through that hole. Now when I'm not using the lift, what I think I'm gonna do is create a cover that just kind of goes over it so that I don't accidentally fall through it and kill myself. Originally I had planned to just kind of put railing around it that you can remove, but I kind of like the idea of just a cover more. All that and so much more, I'm really getting excited because this is all coming together. If you're not already subscribed, you should probably do that so you don't miss the next one. Until next time, we'll see ya.